Versus. Now it's Glenmore Bowl. We had a famous match game here a few years ago. Emil Nagelson and Phil Smith. Nag averaged 238 and Phil 235. How about that? We're going to do the same thing today, too. I'm sure we will. We will see high scores. Once again, our analyst Dave Newrath. Dave, we see a couple guys, a couple left-handers. Uh, Stan Eaton from Dayton and uh, Kenny Lynch, a couple guys that uh, well, they duked it out all through the year. Well, you're right. They've been participating in, uh, with and against each other. They know each other's games, and they're pretty well-schooled players, playing approximately the same place on the lane, and uh, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of five pins going right today. Okay, you just saw a little bit of Stan Eaton. Now, Kenny Lynch, a man that we saw back in week number two, and uh, he lost in the championship. Well, that's right. A again, you know, there's not too much you can say other than they're both beautiful getting to the line they've got good rotation on the ball and uh, and they're good pocket shooters okay and the other two guys we'll be seeing today will be Kerry Logan and Tim Sharp so when we come back we will have everything but first let's take a little bit of a look at some of the hardware that uh, that the bowlers will be winning today when they walk out and I guess Dave with the exception of the sixteen hundred dollar first prize this isn't too dusty to take home. I've got one of those at home, and I dust it off every week just to look at it and remember how nice it was. Okay, so when we come back, the championship game starts for the BPA King of Bowling for 1985. <laughs> King of Bowling. Eaton, the first ball of the championship, and it takes all ten down, Dave. What a perfect way to start, Tommy. Right in the one-two pocket. Good ball reaction. Ten pins in the pit to begin the match. Kenny Lynch. The last time we saw Kenny Lynch was back in Stones Lanes on another blustery Sunday morning. It was the second week of the season. He was uh, defeated Rick Hensley and Ray Tucky Perez in Perez's lowest game of the year, 140. Let us not forget that. Then lost in the championship to Allen Downs, the then king. And he takes out a strike. So if you people think that these guys didn't come to bowl today for that $1,600 first prize, you've got another thought coming. A lot of money on the line. I don't know about you guys, but this past uh, month, just seemed to go by so quickly. It was amazing watching this ball breaking in a little late at the end, but head pin going to the wall, coming off, giving the five pin a little help as it pushes out the ten. Well, Kenny averaged 248 on his pair yesterday, and Stan Eaton had a 279. One of three left-handers in the final four, and Lynch good on his second frame. Two big X's. Well, I can tell you one thing. A left-hander is going to win the first two games. <laughs> You always like to go out on the limb. And oh, yeah, thing. sure. You're looking at Stan Eaton. <laughs> Stan Eaton, the only time we uh, we saw him this year was back in week number eight, Loveland Lanes. This man, not too well known in the Cincinnati area, but starting to make his mark. He's pretty popular up in Dayton. Mr. Quite a left-hander, I'll tell you. He's going to be popular anywhere where there's a, a good shot because he can execute with the best of them. And he's right there again. Oh, a little light there, Tom. Ball not quite coming up as sharply. I think we're going to set up the match this way. Let's, let's. Uh, from what I've seen so far, the left lane is hooking off a little sharply. The right lane, not quite as sharp a break on the back end. So the players are going to have to make a little adjustment with their feet. Speaking of feet, if we can see during the course of this match, Stan Eaton has, I guess, what we call 14 karat gold shoes on. A very uh, flamboyant pair of bowling shoes. Not only that, they're noticeable. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so Eaton, good for the spare in the second frame. And uh, he will have his work cut out for him, because I could remember that, that week at Stones Lanes, Kenny Lynch just, well, he was just taken out by a better bowler that day. Alan Downs was on top of his game, and unfortunately, we haven't seen Alan since week number two, but from all the word I've heard around the greater Cincinnati area, he's still busting the pins pretty well. He's tough. He'll be around for a lot of years. And he leaves it on the left lane, the seven pin. I guess he's alternating currents here, yeah. Dave. <laughs> he, uh, a little bit too much ball deflection that time, Tommy. A lot of times when you see the uh, the weak seven, 
as that was, and the four pin just goes to the channel and just kind of wallows around over there. Uh, the ball deflected too much, not quite as much drive as he should have had. Sam, we've left a few of those in our day. I've had a number of them famous sevens and all that, tens. Cross lane for the spare. Look out. Oh. <laughs> Just hangs it, oh. hangs it from dropping into the oh, channel. Right. So we got a bunch of fine representatives from Huda Pole today here. Bob Casey's here, Roy Nixon, Ken Rippincher, and uh, Lee, Lee Overlay. And the, on the scoreboard, well, we got uh, Stan Eaton's got 39 in a spare, and Kenny's working on two perfect strikes. So we're going to see some big X's. Yesterday we bowled 150 games, we averaged 216. How about that, Tom and David? Not too dusty. 150 games, 216. The girls average 192 for 42 games. Here's Kenny Lynch. Wanted to bring it around a little more than that. Six pin stands. Did not get the slide through at the line. The slide step, let's take a look at it here, Tom. Watch his foot. It's not going to slide through. Now, right there, it just hangs up a little bit. He, he can see he can't get through the ball. It's, he was a little cramped, and he elbows it. He says, eh, that's okay. Still early in the yeah, match. I got a break. The slide is probably one of the most important parts of the game because it's the only area that, that your body has time to look. <laughs> the only time that your body has time to compensate for an error that was committed uh, somewhere earlier in your approach, Tom. You know, I don't know if these guys get together before the game start, but they really have a flair for the dramatic for taking down those one-pin spares. Oh, hanging them off the edge, look like they're going to hook by. But they make them. The good bowlers always do. Sam, you were mentioning some of those fine people from Hewtipol uh, coming out every Sunday supporting it, and without Hewtipol's support, the BPA could not exist in the form it exists today. Oh, look at that. That's right. Kenny Lynch with a strike in the fourth frame. Three yeah. out of four for Mr. Lynch. It was only perfect. That was a crusher there. Yeah, the Hewtipol people have done a wonderful job, and the BPA, too, and uh, uh, I just can't say enough nice things about the BPA. Uh, they've sponsored a lot of tournaments down through the years, and they help me have a lot of good times and uh, a lot of people at home taking advantage of their bowling specials. Dan Eaton. Oh, brought it out. What's the ones going on now, Sam? You, they're giving away a car? Oh, a new car there. Go out to your favorite BPA and join the Summer League. Well, Mr. Right there is his, his extension. His foot is uh, a little bit turned too far to the left. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, your foot should be square or at a, a perpendicular angle to the foul line. Too much variance from that causes you to throw off. He likes flirting with uh, disaster with those cross lanes. But nevertheless, his third consecutive spare, Stan Eaton, down in this match. This is game one. The winner goes on to meet. Kerry Logan, we all remember Kerry Logan, the king from week number seven. Dethroned, possibly one of the hottest young bowlers in Cincinnati, Greg Lothian. And uh, just right on down the line today, then we go on to Tim Sharp, a man that we saw lose a couple weeks ago, Green Hills Lanes to Terry Sacconi. And uh, it's just, just super bowling. It's been super bowling all year, and they haven't been disappointed. That's the reason why. Great shot there. Strike got to kick off the wall. Well, we bowled 66 games on a two. We've averaged in 213, so I just... Let's take a look at it, see if we can pick it up here. The head pin's going to go straight back. The three pin, second one from the middle, is going to go to the wall. See it push right there, come off the wall, take out the ten, and then into the six pin. Every like. pin doing its job. Very good. Those words will live in infamy. That's right. <laughs> Kenny Lynch. Well, Kenny Lynch, he, he knocked down 238, 221, 244, 290, 224, and 258. <laughs> and Sam is still knocking him down. Oh, man. He, Another strike. He, averaged, he shot 248 on his pair yesterday, so he knows where to throw it. The light swisher. Pins dancing around, doing their job. Tom, this man's got all the shots right now. He's going to be tough to beat. Of course, I was mentioning Tim Sharp. Sharp rolled... A 15-28 yesterday, which included an 8-11 series, Sam. Well, the first three games, 8-11, he was sensational, I'll tell you. In fact, all six of them, 15-28's a 2.54 average. Not too bad. <laughs> oh, oh, five of six for Kenny Lynch. And Stan Eaton, <clears throat> lead X's a lot of the way here. He's got his work cut out now. 
You can take a look at it here. Driving through the one-two pocket. No deflection on this ball. Uh-uh. No way. Into the five pin. Takes out the eight pin. The last thing to do to job. He's on a roll. He's lined up. He's hot, and he wants it. Stan Eaton, the 28-year-old vice president and treasurer of his own company, Eaton Forms Corporation, the man from Kettering, Ohio, brings in a 206 average. And Eaton... Boy, I'll tell you what, between those sevens and tens for Stan, cross lane on the right lane, this is uh, testing every ounce of bowling. Just not playing the lanes properly, Tom. He's, uh, he's in a little bit too far on the uh, right-hand lane, especially. That ball deflected so bad that um, he could have had a pocket split that time. Stan Eaton, if he wants any shot at all, better make a move on the right lane, line up, and throw strikes, Sam. That's right. Exactly right. Bears, I don't think Bears is going to get it. Equal to the task on every seven-pin spare, but like you said, with Kenny Lynch throwing those big X's, it's going to be tough. Well, in the fifth frame, Eaton's got 98 in a spare, and Kenny's got 69 in a third with a three-bagger up. So, uh, can Sam Eaton better get striking right now, or the race is going to be over. As he stands in the seventh frame, Stan Eaton, gold shoes and all, got to have it. Oh, yeah, that and he, took off, and he knew it. He knew it. Breathed a sigh of relief when the last pin fell. In the, in the greater Cincinnati Bowling Associated, dislected Bill Pollard, one of our kings way back in 1971. He was on 16 times. That's that famous Pollard family from For Sales, Indiana. Boy, we've seen them. We've oh. seen several of those members. Rick Pollard, a couple, oh, what, six, seven weeks ago? Rick, Regina, Regina Pollard, Queen. Ron Pollard hasn't been on, but he, Billy, too. Good for the sport of bowling to have a family like that as Kenny Lynch leaves the 10 pin on the right lane in the seventh frame. He looks so loose. He looks so fluid and confident up there, Tom. Uh, you're going to get the, the pins doing their job. And, and from what I saw yesterday out here, speed was the answer. The bowlers that threw the ball with too much authority, even though they hit the pocket continually, could not carry. The bowlers with the softer roll, the uh, Kenny Lynch's, the... Uh, Tim Sharps. I mean, they, they had the slow roll, and they got the pins down, they stayed on the lane, and they carried a lot of strikes. They had the touch yesterday, David. I'll say that. When you average 216 for 150 games, they're knocking X's down. I'll say that. These fine people over at Glenmore Bowl. You know, it's funny. You see the, see the places like Western Bowl and the Super Bowl, the, the, the newer establishments. But, Sam, I guess it was places like... Uh, Glenmore Bowl, where we got our start in bowling. Or That's you, right. Places like Coleman Lane, where you got your start in bowling. The roots of bowling, as it were. Well, I know I got my start here. We've Tom. had some famous bowlers bowl here. Charlie Dinger, Foss Perry. We had a lot of them here. Huffleman Bread team was super. I started bowling here when I was eight years old, Tom. Shall we, shall we do math old. and figure out how no, old that no, leaves we you? Won't, we won't go into <laughs> that, but... That's back when they still had the duck pinballs. Remember those, Sam? They were undersized, so little people could bowl. Little people? I'm still a little people, but I was even littler then. <laughs> you know, they told Dave he'd stop growing after 21. He didn't know it was going to be inches, though. Really? <laughs> oh, he flirted with disaster. Well, that was, and, a, that was a must strike there. And he knocked down that goalpost split. Well, he cut it down to 20, spreading. Dave and Sam, they are playing for some big bucks. Oh, And here nice. we sit announcing it. And these guys are playing for a $1,600 first prize. And the rest of them really aren't too shabby. $800 for second, $550 for third. And the loser of this match will pick up $300. Well, even the alternate gets $250 even just to show up. And, this. and who is that alternate to see? Well, it's supposed to be <laughs> Tucky Prez, but our official standby is Kim Herman. Oh, critical frame. That had may, to have have sealed, it. may have sealed Eaton's faith here. The party is over for this game. That's right. Well, on our U.S. Open, Jennifer Heinke is going to replace Nancy Sig out at uh, Topeka, Kansas in the U.S. Open. Topeka. Eaton goes for the 6-10, picks it up, and surprisingly... I say surprisingly only because opens have seemed to come early in a lot of the matches this year. Our first open in game number one comes in the ninth frame. And Kenny Lynch 
is going to go on to meet the man who was king in week number seven, Kerry Logan. Another left-hander. Yet another one. That's and Sam, right. you want to make another prediction? Not another left-hander is going to win again. <laughs> Now we got a super score marker. Lou Huda Polar always likes to mark X's. Oh, he said he he'd does. like to mark 300s if he could. He said he makes nice zeros in oh. the 300, and Lynch just doesn't let up. 10 pin had ideas of going down, but did not. Well, Kenny's been bowling good the last couple of weeks. Pins bowling. Well, it's all over. We know that, but uh, Kenny gets a spare. They have 88, 208, 238 he can get yet. The only possible thing that could happen, and by George, we're not going to wish any bad luck, but he would have to miss this, get a five count on his next ball, miss those, and what are the chances of those? <laughs> not too, not too good. I'd say we'd have a better chance of seeing it rain inside of Glenmore I Bowl. I think you're right. Well, uh, Kenny's up by 35 with one frame to go. That's can't be done. There's there's Mama. Lynch back there. We, we showed you some of the hardware that these gentlemen will be oh. picking up. And you know, Dave uh, and Sam, I'm sure you have your own little mantles and uh, collection. But for the money is one thing. It's always nice to get financial rewards. But David has a second place finish, finish yeah. behind yeah, Rick yeah. Martin. I have one behind Dick Buckeye, too, you know. You uh, Tell me you guys aren't proud of those. Well, yeah, we'll I shine it up every once in a while. We'll keep them uh, around. That tells how many years you bowl, though. That's the trouble. <laughs> the wives aren't too crazy about it because they usually do the dusting. <laughs> Kenny Lynch just polishing off the pins in game number one. Oh. Already has it won. And Lynch finishing up the way he started with another strike. Well, 238 with one more. Eight strikes for Kenny Lynch. I thought he'd come to play today. He's serious. <laughs> Serious but loose. I, I did notice that when I came in. He uh, he seems to be putting it all in perspective. And Dave, I guess from a man who spent several years on the tour, you have to do that. Well, yeah, that's exactly right. Your game depends on your mental discipline and your attitude. What a nine pin. Uh, How about that? So Stan Eaton will just finish, finish off what Kenny Lynch has already finished. Lynch with a 237. And if that's indicative of what we're going to see here today, those pins are going to hurt. That's right, get for the, certain. Get the Ben Gay out and start oh, rubbing rub out Oh, rub humming either. Just not the right roll, not the right line or piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. Who knows exactly what uh, ingredient he would have had to change, but uh, not typically the type of game we'd uh, expect to see out of stand. Uh, yeah, he's just a little deep, David, and he ain't getting a seven down, that's all. I've counted four, maybe five frames where he's left that seven pin. Four sevens is right. If he'd be playing poker, would be all right. That's right. Well, 193 is not too bad, but uh, with Kenny with 237, why, that's going to go on to meet another left-hander, Kerry Logan. Bring it around. Look at that. And <laughs> I guess that pretty much sums up the day for Stan Eaton. So... Game one here in the championship of the BPA is finished as Kenny Lynch goes on to win, beating Stan Eaton 237 to 191, and he will go on to meet. This man right here will go on to meet Kerry Logan in game number two. lady that we saw back in week number four at Glenn Schmidt's Lanes over in Newport. Joanne Allen and Joanne, the way you did it in week number four, you did it again as the queen for the year in 1985. Where's your game been going this year? I mean, from week number four to here, you had a high pinfall yesterday of, what, 12.52. Where's your game been going? I've been practicing a lot more than I have been. I've been bowling a lot better. Things have been working out. Has the competition been as tough as it, it seems to be uh, throughout the year on the lady side? Yeah, everybody's been bowling really well. well I'll tell you what, Joanne, for your uh, for being the queen for 1985, a check for $250, you'll get your hardware later. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Thank you made it a lot so of fun. Much. Well, there you see the proprietor, Les Horseman. Been around for a long, long time. He taught me how to throw my first bowling ball. And the man you're looking starting match number two, Kerry Logan. 
man. How many times have we seen a match start with a big X? Well, that's the way to do it. A little bit on Kerry Logan. He was our king back in week number seven. On four games in the BPA this year that we've seen him on TV, he's got an average of 209. And he comes to us, Cincinnati, Ohio, where so many have come. 32-year-old computer programmer. This is the winner, though, of game number one, Kenny Lynch. It's going to be a dogfight. Oh, oh, oh. There you Mama. go. Oh, boy. He's living a good life. That's all I have to say. I mean to tell you. Let's check it out here on the replay. You talk about every pin doing its job. This is overtime right here. Head pin. Center your screen. It's going to go to the right-hand wall. Come off. Not only take out the six pin, but the neck of it twirls around. Hey, yuck. Little <laughs> drop kick on the ten. He's got him dancing. Doing its job at both channels. No, there's only one channel. Channel, channel 5, five. Channel that's five. right. Well, certainly. Boy, oh boy. You know, people ask me what I'm going to miss most about this show, <laughs> and they think I'm going to say the bowling. The two comedians working with you. It's the quick wit of Mr. <laughs> Sam Coleman and Mr. Dave Murat. Oh, certainly. Kenny Lynch. Got to stay alive on 5, don't you know that? All the time. <laughs> oh, Kerry uh, is a regular bowler here. I think he knows every board in this place pretty good. He knows where to throw them. Oh, look at that. Oh. Found the groove, stayed with it. Oh, it looks like automatic to me. You know, I think we're going to have a problem, though. We only have one 62 Comet to give away. Is that what, all, really? What, what if we have two 300 games? I think we could duplicate the award, really. Okay. Think Lou likes to mark 300s, he told me before. That's true. Well, then we'd have to have a roll-off, so someone would have to lose. But, you know, maybe they could alternate on what nights of the week they drove the 62 com. Uh, we had a roll-off here one time. 22 frames we went one time in that best ball. Yeah, I remember that. I was in it. Yeah. David oh. <laughs> David Just was one of the competitors that day. 13 strikes in a row, and I lost. That's right. So Knuckles must have been dragging on the well, ground. Steve Bunnell and uh, Nita Vollmer. Uh, Struck, struck, strike, strike, strike. Oh, tiring day. That ball there, it's a shame. Left lane. Lane number five treated Kerry Logan with a little bit of negativism. Threw a good shot. The ball drove through so sharply, he almost left the 6-8. Leaving the eight, easy spare. Had them all in the pocket. Kenny Lynch. Boy, you know, you, you brought this out before, but it's just it's just amazing because... When you see these guys not only perform well, but perform well in front of the lights, uh, we, may, we make light of that because you've done it so many times, and Sam too, but, okay. you know, it's, you just can't say enough about these guys. And their well, Logan's got 49 in a second with a spare, and Kenny's perfect with two strikes. He may make it three right there. Oh. He's going a lasso if he's been today. Three straight. He's really loose today, I'll tell you, Tom and David, really loose. Eight strikes for Mr. Lynch in the first game as he took out Tim Sharp or Stan Eaton, 237 to 191. He's facing Kerry Logan right now, and the winner of this match goes on to meet the man who dropped 1,528 pins in six games yesterday, Tim Sharp. And Sam, that included that 8-11 series. Well, that 8-11 was fantastic. I'd seen every ball he threw. Split screen. Watch the reaction. Let's watch the pins. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How sweet it is. Perfect through four. Kenny Lynch is going to give Kerry Logan a lesson here if he doesn't come around. But boy, what a shame it would be if Kerry Logan would lose on a bad break. Watch it right here. Perfect execution down at the line. Head pin driving right straight through the ball, taking out every pin. He liked it. Said, yeah. He knew it as soon as it hit the head pin. Oh. Two bad breaks back to back a crushing eight, and now a washout of a ten pin, sending the five pin right in front of it. Tom, tough, tough break for Kerry Logan. It looked like interference on the play, I think. So it looked like Munoz got in the way there. That's right. <laughs> no penalty markers down, but it'll stay. <laughs> well, they have the Scotch doubles here, too. Les has. He has a San Tony team event, Glenmore five-game sweeper. <laughs> Kerry Logan. Well, I guess, you know, you don't bowl for 24 years and take yourself out of a match. So you can bet, come the 10th frame, Kerry Logan will still be in it. No uh, way. That's right. That's got a lot of frames to go yet. Uh, got 
he's not going to look for his bowling bag just yet. No, no, no. The play is still on yet. You've got a long way to go. Both players perfect through four. In the pocket, that is. It's certainly. Kerry Logan. Oh, he is back on track. So we are halfway through game number two of the championship at the BPA King of Bowling. When we come back, the finish of the Kerry Logan Kenny Lynch match. Game two, I guess you could call it the semifinal match between Kerry Logan and this man right here, Kenny Lynch. Lynch a winner in the first game, 237 to 191 over Stan Eaton. Right now, he's perfect through four frames. Right lane, is it going to be five? Seven pin says no. Not to be. No, he had a little problem like Stan Eaton had, a little, little around the corner there. That leaves a seven. Didn't happen to see uh, Saturday night last night, did you? Yes, I did. The inevitable. Howard Cosell hosting the show. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Well, Maybe we could bring him in as a guest commentator Maybe. next year. Maybe next year, although... I don't, I don't think he could offer any more insight than the two sidekicks that I have, Sam Coleman and Dave Nurat. Oh, you think so, huh? I don't think he well, could. Well, no more insight, but uh, he could use a few words we probably wouldn't be able to pronounce. Laborious. <laughs> Come on. La what? Kenny Lynch. <laughs> but again, with the seven pin, proving that he treats the seven pin equally. That's right. On both left and right lane. Well, all these nice gray and blue shirts are furnished by Hal Manufacturing, Jim Chasteen, and all that hardware out there by Carl's Buller's Paddock. What kind of a ball is that that he's using? It looks like a transparent ball, Dave. Well, it is. It's, uh, it's actually a plastic ball that's poured around a solid weight block. It's got a few sparkles thrown in it just for good measure. There you go. It's kind a of bit a of flash. Oh. You know, it's a harder shell ball, and the, the um, you know, if the lanes were hooking quite a bit more, he, he might be using it on his first ball. But as it is, he's just using it for a spare. Kerry Logan can get back in the match <clears throat> right here with a strike. Sixth frame. Oh, yeah. He was talking to the ball all the way down the lane. And that big smile afterward, you knew yeah. what the result was. I'd cut it down to ten. With one more, he can get even. We can take a look at it here on the replay. The ball that's going to get him into position to take the lead. This one right here. Could it be any better? Uh-uh. One-two pocket. Straight through. No deflection. Ten pins in the pit. This one here will get it right to even. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't stand a chance. He couldn't put a bulldozer down there and do it any better than that. Went with him. more speed. He threw them three with authority, a little more zip to it. Went with more speed, a little more direct line, and there you see where it got you. Well, when Kenny's got 128 and a spare, and uh, Logan's got 88, 8, 118, and three more there, and he's technically he's up. Kenny, Kenny's got a good striking right now. Oh, yeah. He heard you say that. That's right. One of, one of the benefits about being so close to the bowlers is that we can reach Sam out Coleman speaks, we everybody can reach out, listens. Reach out and touch him today. That shot there was absolutely perfect. He had to have it. This match is going to go down to the wire. I can just feel it. This is another must strike right now. This particular point in the season, Sam, they're all must strike. Why, certainly they are. Thoughts of For $1,600. I was going to say, thoughts of those, that big change. Oh, look at that. Oh. Both bowlers have increased their speed, decreased the angle of entering into the pocket. I wouldn't be a, a surprised to see them both take it to the wall. Perfection, you're seeing it right here, Channel 5. These bowlers are making moves and adjustments like they've never done before. Looks if, great. If they go out, they'll have a tie, David. Well, we've got time. Why not? Sure. Why, certainly. Wait. He almost had a tie back in week nine. 
Hyde's lane. George Ball sitting out. We're talking the present right now. And the crowd starting to get oh. behind Kerry Logan. We can't get any closer than this. 148, 148, and two strikes up for both of them. Let me see. That probably means they're even. Right? Well, you'd think they would, huh? <laughs> this house Look is at noted Lou. for high score. Yeah, listen, what? Lou Hudipol keeps our score every week as you see it when it comes up on the screen. Lou Hudipol does a fine job. Well, I'll tell you, if you had to thank everyone involved, we'd have to start three weeks ago. Really? Oh, boy. Too much deflection. You saw the ball almost directly behind the seven on that shot. A little bit too much speed. Yeah, a little more too much zip. Watch it here. The ball is going to jump to the left after it hits the head pin. Right there. Now watch it jump to the left just not quite catch the four pin at the proper angle to snap out the seven cross lane for a he's got to have it and he does so the ball is in kenny lynch's court as it were dave now well, we got tom gray from lozanaville here and we got our president tom tom murphy's here mr bettinghouse is here from cross gate so we're Kenny, this is another exer we got to go with right here for the, Kenny. The BPA faithful have been out every every week, bad weather and good, reaping the benefits of the championship. Oh, oh. oh. an Ooh. absolutely horrendous shot. Kenny Lynch can't believe his eyes. Neither can I. Critical situation. Dumps the ball out to the left, not hooking back, leaving the three six seven. A difficult spare to say the least. But the count. The count is a big shot. Watch this. Never going out that far before. Coming back, just barely touching the head pin. Mm. He's going to have to slide the three pin into the seven. He's got to have a spare. Nope. Oh, that boy. That, the, I guess, wow. Very, Worst very. ball he's thrown all day. That's almost a kiss right there. That puts a carry in Look the at him. driver's seat. He that can't one. even believe he did it. What did uh, I do? Where was I? Must have went to the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Kenny Lynch, to have any shot whatsoever, has to throw three perfect strikes here in a 10th frame. There's one. There's one. He'll get 229 if he goes out. He can make uh, carry mark. That's but the he... situation, Sam. You're absolutely right. With this one right here, he's going to force Kerry Logan to mark. The count is of no consequence. He needs this one to put any sort of pressure on Kerry Logan whatsoever. It's amazing. You throw, what, 21, 20 beautiful frames, and then one bad ball oh. to wipe you right out of a match, Dave. So exciting part about the sport of bowling. That makes it interesting now, that strike there. A mental letdown can always kill you. You know, the, the true greats in the game are, are the ones that have the least amount of mental letdowns. Kenny Lynch has thrown every ball around the pocket except for the ninth frame. A total breakdown in concentration. It could cost him. Well, he needed three X's. He got three X's. Kenny Lynch put as much heat as an open in the ninth frame can on Kerry Logan. He well, goes I, out two, two, nine. Right. Well, you know, the best mark for a mark is right now is get a strike. I, uh, that's the way I'd look at it, Sam. There's no words of wisdom. No doubt about it. Got Gary to Logan. have a mark. Oh. Oh. Knew it. The people cheering Gary knew it. How about that? Well, Gary answered a call. I would say that. Well, Kenny had one up at 229, and look, Kerry can get 247. Of course, the high score on this year's BPA King of Bowling belongs, actually, the high and low scores belong to Ray <laughs> Tucky Perez. <laughs> Tuck with a 275, way back in week number five, and, well, shall we say it one more time, the horrendous 140 back in week number two. So, Kerry Logan is our winner here in game number two as he gets ready to polish off the six pin spare. I don't know if he's got that many friends or if he bought a round of drinks, but uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people rooting him home now. That's momentum going in to the championship game against Tim Sharp. So, 
We are moments away from determining the king for the 1985 BPA King of Bowling. You're looking right now at Kerry Logan. His 237 game bested Kenny Lynch's 229. He wins the right to meet Tim Sharp for the championship coming up next. Greg Honshaw. They tell me it's his birthday today. I don't know if he's willing to admit that, but he, along with everybody else, and uh, like I said, the list too numerous to name, our director, Calvin Washington, our producer, coordinator, Audrey Whitley, all the people who set up, all the people who tear down, all the people who run camera, run videotape, bring a slow-mo, all thank you so much for 12 solid weeks of BPA bowling oh, on Channel 5. And Terry Logan starts out where he ended game number two with a big X. We're all starting with X's this today. Well, yeah. we've got a lot of money at stake here, and not only that, it's nice to be the king from week to week, but it's a lot <laughs> nicer to be the king oh, that's at right. the end Tim, of the year. Timmy's been in the finals twice. He finished second last year behind D. Hall. 26-year-old oh, Tim yeah. Sharp from Highland Heights, Kentucky. You don't think he lived 365 days wondering what it would have been like to be the king? Now he wants to prove it. You know, guys like him, you always know will surface come money time. This is it, 12 weeks, all the games, all the competitors, and it comes down to this one game. I'm sorry to see it over, but we couldn't have selected two better com competitors to go at it in our last match. Sharp frame. Oh. There's the big strike. Now, Sharp, interestingly enough, only appeared once. That was back in week number 10 at Green Hills. Lost in the first game, and I'm sure a performance that this man right here, Tim Sharp, wasn't really happy with a 179. Let's watch this ball here. This is no 179 ball. No. Straight through the pocket, touching the one, the three, the five, and then covering both the eight and the nine. Carry low into that. It's going to be a duke out in the center of the ring type of game time. That's right. Even though Dave Goodall would like them doubles, I'll tell you. It's going to be right down to the wire. 1,600 first and 800 second. Kerry Lowe, king for week number seven. Appeared in four games on TV this year. 209 average, not including today. Today, he's appeared in one. 237 to 229 over Kenny Lynch. Oh. oh boy. You know every pin means more because it's for all the marbles. This is it. Both players have been there before. Neither one is going to let the other person bother him at all. Sam. Well, Kenny, uh, Ken Logan is perfect with three and, and Timmy can make it the same way. So there's going to be a lot of X's this game. I call Timmy. What do, you, what do you think his nickname is? Razor. Oh, and he is sharp. That's right. It certainly is. Five 300 games. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh, how about that six pin? Kicking off the wall, wrapping around the ten pin. Speed, the critical thing today. Kerry Logan had to speed it up to hold the line and to get the carry. And Tim Sharp had to slow it down to get the nice smooth roll and keep the pins down. Would you say carry or carry? Carry. Oh, oh, I misunderstood you. Split screen. Good opportunity to watch the form of Tim Sharp. Low at the line. Good knee bend. Excellent execution. Oh, Perfect roll. Ten in the pick. What do they say? People always save their best for last. And there's... Oh boy, this is like this is like counting down until the ball drops on New Year's Eve in Times Square. What are we? We're 12 frames total away from seeing the end of the BPA this year. I don't want to see an end. I'm having a lot of fun. Well, certainly we're having fun. Here on Channel 5. and Stay alive on 5? What a way to end it. These two competitors, perfect so far. Oh, look at this. Wow. Hubba, hubba, hubba. When the heat is on, they are at center stage. They always perform their best. Yeah, eight balls, eight strikes. Kerry Logan perfect through four. Tim Sharp perfect through four. We need not say that it is tied. But we'll say it anyway. We're, that's right, we're tied. <laughs> the fun continues later on today on Channel 5 with the Reds and Mets. And it is our manager's birthday today, Pete Rose. 44, I believe. Oh, oh, oh. How about that? 
that Gary Logan. Five straight. Lou Huda pulls Mark and MXs with, with real sincere. He likes to mark X's, he's, he says. Really, he said he, he, he's best when he has to mark 300s. And once again, in the long list of people we should thank, Lou Hudipol, a great, great job scorekeeping. His lovely wife, Bo. Does a, a sensational job, I'll tell you. Sensational job for the BPA, sensational job just coordinating everything. And you see her in the background every week. Today we're bringing her to the oh, foreground. Oh. Oh, oh. Oh. oh! Absolutely incredible. Guys, let's take a look at this on the replay. We've got to see this perfectly in the pocket. It, is it a strike? No. A solid nine pin. Incredible. Unbelievable. Look at the head pin there. Going to the oh. wall, coming off, spinning and spinning. If it would have moved back about a quarter of an inch, it would have taken the nine pin out. As it is, it's going to wind up as a single pin spare. So, a spare for Tim Sharp in the fifth frame. You know, we thank a lot of people, and a lot of time goes into putting this show together, but the people at home, you've been watching us. You've been keeping us on the air now for 20-some years. We want to thank you for staying tuned in to us and watching the finest bowling in the Midwest here on Channel 5. And I would be remiss of my duties if I didn't thank two of the greatest, not only bowlers, but commentators, Dave Newrath and Sam Coleman. It's made my first year of BPA a very pleasurable encounter. I've, I've enjoyed it immensely. You, oh, oh, Tim Sharp. A mental breakdown, getting the ball in a little bit too much, pulling it to the left, going right straight through the nose. Watch it here. Going to take the head pin, center your screen, straight back. The two pin, second one, just going into the gutter and trying Taps to work its way tip. over to the seven, but tough break. He's got to have it to have even the outside, most outside shot at catching Kerry Logan. You He's high. You split the 6-10. Do you bring it right across or bounce it off the wall? Either way, uh, with a gentleman like Tim Sharp, he doesn't really have the ball speed to bounce the pins out of the pit. Uh, so he has to rely more on accuracy than, say, a uh, Rick Pollard, for example. So... Kerry Logan is perfect through five frames. Kerry Logan, the owner of three 300 games. Pretty much in control, at least at this point, thanks to Sharp's open in the six. Oh. That was a critical shot there, Tom. And a lot of times, if your opponent loosens up or opens up just a bit, you might have a tendency to let down. Not Kerry Logan right here. What a shot at the bottom. Look at this ball. One, two, pocket. Any deflection? No way. Not today. Ten pins in the pit. Kerry Logan is perfect through six. He's Sam. got the adrenaline going, I'll tell you that. If he makes this strike, Sam, I want you to recall the last 300 game that we saw here on the BPA King of Bowling. I'd like to see another one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 19, 1975, Easter Sunday at Stones. Bobby Dieters. Bowl 300. Who do you think it was against? Bill Heflin uh -oh. with 247. Hard luck, Bill. Boy, tell me about it. Well, uh, Gary's perfect for seven frames. You can't throw him any better than that. And Timmy has 135 and a six, so he's got to go go the route right now. Yeah. It's tough to regain your composure, I would imagine, Dave, yeah. when the adrenaline is flowing so high and then all of a sudden the bottom falls out as it did in the sixth frame. Well, Tom, a solid nine pin in the fifth frame. Threw a great shot. What's he get? No reward. Eases up just a hair. Can he break up the split? No. Uh, his, his chances of winning the game are pretty slim right now, but it's incredibly tough to pick yourself up after a couple bad breaks. But nevertheless, Tim Sharp picks up the spare in the seventh frame. Uh, when a man's got seven in a row, you, there's no defense for that. Story is Kerry Logan. Seven straight strikes. I think that's the most we've seen this year in a row. From the get. From, from the, the start, get. certainly. Mm -hmm. Tucky still got her high game, 275, and uh, Kenny Lynch had 266. But right. I think Kerry's going to beat that number today. Oh, we'll go out in style. Cincinnati style. Oh, yeah. Sharp back on the strike track, picking up an eighth frame strike after going spare, open spare in the fifth, sixth, and seventh frame. So the story, though, Kerry Logan, he's got the people on the edge of their seats. Not often you do see a 300 game on TV, whether it be nationally or locally on the BPA. Last one, as Sam said, 1975. Can lightning strike twice? 
on channel five. Let's see. Eighth hurry. Oh. Too quick to the line. You see him motion with his hand. He fanned the ball, which means his thumb got down into about a three or a four o'clock position, and the ball ain't gonna roll from there. Leaving the three, five, six, nine, but nevertheless, Logan still in command here. 41 pin lead. This if he brings back the spare. And he does exactly that, Dave. So, Kerry Logan, if he doesn't count the money, the $1,600 first prize too fast, he may be just the one to pocket it. Situations this, Tom. Should Tim Sharp strike all the way out, Kerry Logan would have to mark in both the ninth and 10th frames. That's all he has to do. Let's see how he comes off his first spare. This is the ninth frame championship match. You're looking at Kerry Logan. Solid nine, Dave? No. Oh, wait. wait. <laughs> how about the solid, no, that's six. solid second, six? Second one solid from six. the right. Yes. <laughs> I must have my contact in uh, backwards, Dave. Uh, so a you're little. taking nine pins. <laughs> it's, you know, it's funny. When you're watching a left-handed or right-hander bowl, you really <laughs> lose track sometime of which pin is doing what. That is a six pin. The right-hander, solid four. Cross lane for an easy spare. Kerry Logan. Well, well Timmy's got to go to work right now. Now it's the time to... He's got to get, he's gotta get out for 245, so Kerry will have to get a mark. That's exactly right. He's got to have it. The whole season comes down to this, the ninth frame. Tim Sharp, in order to have any, any chance of winning whatsoever, has to strike on this ball. Now he's been a little soft on the last couple of shots on this lane. Oh, how about that? Well, he knows what he has to do. It's just a case of getting the engines in gear and doing it. Tim Sharp, the semi-finalist in last year's BPA, unless... Gary Logan can just, I guess, fall apart in the 10th uh, frame. Well, not not really, Tom, because, you know, he does need a, um, uh, a good a count and a, and a mark. And we've seen pocket splits before here on Channel 5. So Tim Sharp could still be the champion if he strikes right now. Got to have it. Oh. Don't go away. Still just needs yet. two more yet. 245 won't be too bad. You've said it before. We've seen some exciting bowling. This is no exception. Tim Sharp can make Kerry Logan mark in the 10th frame if he strikes in this 11th frame. Threw a good shot. Oh, oh there it is. It's interesting now, I'll tell you. This is a point, Sam, where some people tend to let down. Count is of the absolute essence right here. Well, Timmy can get 245, he goes out, but Kerry could get 265, but he's going to make him mark. It's going to be very, very interesting in the 10th frame here. This is a big ball, too, really. Got to have it. 10 pins. Oh. There it is. So, Tim Sharp finishes out his 1985 BPA King of Bowling season with five straight, giving him a 245. Well, Kerry needs a mark. Like I said before, the best mark is an X. He knows it. It sounds easy, but when you have to do it for the big, big check, who knows what's going to happen. This is it. He's got it cranked. Oh. Can you believe it? He can. He can. Unbelievable. Dave, came, you called it. Came up at the line. You just cannot count it over before it's over. And coming up at the line, directing the ball in a little too early. Going to go right straight through the heart of the pins. The pitcher tells the story. He's got to have it. Did not get it. What a way to How end. about this? How about this? Tim Sharp, what he couldn't accomplish last year, he does it this year with five straight strikes. He is the BPA King of Bowling for 1985, beating Kerry Logan 245 to 242.
Unbelievable. King of Bowling. 